turn on your mic. Mm. All right. So the subject code is BMLS 4005 and currently we are in the unit one. So in the unit one, you have introduction to medical virology, introduction to medically important viruses, structure classification of viruses, multiplication of virus, collection, transportation and storage of samples for viral diagnosis. Um, so uh, as of in, in the last week, we are already discussing about the basics in virology and today I will try to go with the solid definitions and solid uh, uh, content of the viruses. Meanwhile, I will take few time a few uh, minutes of time on revising the topics. So, so far we discussed that uh, viruses are not living organisms, but they are still considered as living organisms because they have the properties of replication and they can able to evolve. So that is why virus are can able to replicate. So because of this proper, uh, property, viruses are still classified as a, uh, living organisms and viruses are the smallest living organisms with uh, which are measured in the nanometers. So the smallest virus is around 20 nanometers, whereas the largest virus is around 200 nanometers. And uh, to study the viral morphology, you need to uh, require a very specialized microscope called scanning electron microscope or any electron microscopes. Then we discussed about uh, viral replication. Usually virus always requires a cell for its replication and it is always inside the cell. So by this, the basic definition of virus is viruses are obligate intracellular infective agents. OK. So this uh, viral replication occurs due to six stages. So virus first will it will attach itself to the surface of the cell. After attachment, it will go for penetration. After penetration, it will uncoat its viral proteins. Then it will biosynthesize the viral products. Then the biosynthesized products will be matured within the cell. Then these viruses will be released outside, outside the cell. Uh, the release can be a, two types, uh, budding release and the lytic release. But with the help of budding release, you will get the Enveloped viruses, whereas by lytic release you will get the non-enveloped viruses. So, and this is all about the replication of the virus. Then, uh, then we discussed about central dogma of life. So this is the basic format how the uh, living things will code the proteins. First, you will have the DNA. DNA will be trans uh, transcribed, okay, transcribed into RNA, and RNA will be translated into the proteins. But there are few viruses which will convert their RNA genome into the DNA. Such viruses are called retroviruses. One example is HIV where it has a specialized enzyme called reverse transcriptase. With the help of this reverse transcriptase, it will convert its RNA to DNA and DNA will be further proceeded to the uh, protein. Hence, it will get more mutations and uh, because of this high mutation rate or uh, variance within the same virus, it's really challenging to treat uh, uh, such viruses. For example, HIV. Then we discussed about uh, viral classification. An authenticate classification was given by Sir David Baltimore according to him. Um, uh, he said that how the viral mRNA has been introduced into the RNA, uh, into the ribosome. So depending upon this property, we have uh, we divided the DNA genome of the viruses into two types: single stranded DNA, double stranded DNA, single stranded RNA, and double stranded RNA. And both DNA and RNA have positive and negative stranded uh, senses. That means positive SSRNA, single uh, uh, negative SSRNA. Similarly, so this is called Baltimore classification, and this is how the virus has, has been um, authentically classified. Then, um, yeah, virus don't have any metabolic activity outside the cell. They cannot grow in inan inanimate media such as blood agar. Bhakaunki cannot be used as a uh, media for the growth of viruses. They are resistant to antibiotics because antibiotics are antibacterial in nature. And the uh, viruses will alter the cell normal mechanism for their survival. And also, viruses can exist only in two forms. Either you will have DNA viruses or you will have RNA viruses, but both, but not the both. Both DNA and RNA genome cannot present in a single uh, virus and I also I also given a another important point that only a one type of virus can able to infect one cell. No two viruses can infect the same cell. So this one also I said a single cell cannot get infected by two viruses. Only one virus will infect the cell so that you already remember. Is everything clear so far students? I'm just revising it. So that's why I was a little bit fast. Yes, sir. Right? Um, yes. yes. Fine. Then, Amman, um, yes. Sir. Mm -hmm. sir, Amman is waiting in lobby. Amman is waiting in lobby. One second. Actually, I didn't activate this uh, meeting lobby. Okay. How to enable, how to 
enable ma'am this uh, application where, where i can allow all the students where i will get that option can you just go yeah permissions manage permissions okay because i'm mm. using browser it's okay ma'am i'm searching here meeting to i'll go disconnect one second oh yes ma'am i got it okay here who can bypass oh yes ma'am oh now everyone can join students who can bypass the lobby yeah so everyone can join now from this in your groups all right so yeah then students families of viruses so are you listening is everyone paying attention students yes sir yeah so i bypass fine i bypass the lobby everyone can join meanwhile uh, let us come to the families of viruses so i said about families that means uh, just by understanding the family we can able to predict the characteristics and the the uh, the pathogenesis of a particular virus so that is why understanding the viral families is very important um so let us start with the classification of viruses so viruses are broadly classified into two types we have Uh, DNA viruses and we have RNA viruses. In both the families, we have a supervalence starting with by the word H. So, in case of DNA, the uh, important virus is always hepatitis. Whereas in case of RNA, the important virus is HIV. So, hepatitis B is DNA virus, whereas hepatitis A and C are the RNA viruses. Then, to remember the families of uh, DNA viruses, we need to know this mnemonic. Mnemonic stands for HAP cube. Can anyone say what is this HAP cube stands for, students? H stands for herpes virus very good herpes viridae then a adeno virus adeno virus very good then p then pox pox viridae very good pox viridae then papo and papo papo virus and parvo viridae yeah so these are the dna viruses and what is the mnemonic for uh, um the individual viruses it is has okay h a s dna has the potential h stands for herpes viridae can you tell me the herpes viridae viruses so we have three classes alpha viruses beta viruses and gamma viruses what is this h s yes uh, alpha we have h s 1 what is the full form of h s 1 uh, adenovirus herpes 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 simplex 1 okay herpes simplex 1 hs hs2 means herpes simplex 2 very good and eb we stands for eb ebola virus don't say mistakes eb we stands for anyone i repeatedly said on that eh? epstein bar virus okay eb we stands for epstein bar virus then in the beta class we have cytomegalovirus cm we stands for cytomegalovirus then gamma is varicella zoster varicella zoster virus again what is ebv students what is the full form of ebv extreme bar bar virus extreme yes, very good extreme bar virus then cm we means Semi-stance semi megalovirus. Semi-stance megalovirus. Cyto megalovirus. Cyto means cell megalo. That means enlargement virus. That means this virus will enlarge the cells, especially the cells in the brain. Very dangerous virus. Okay, CMV. Then VJ stands for varicella zoster. Then uh, we have adenovirus, smallpox, and we have the deadly hepatitis in this HIV. Uh, sorry, in this DNA viruses. so these are the types of dna viruses then coming to the rna viruses so rna viruses can be memorized the families of rna viruses can be memorized by proxy bt okay so proxy bt stands for uh, paramyxoviridae 
एडस्टिन बार वायरस डीएनए डीएनए ओके साइटोमेगलोवायरस वायरस बिलोंग्स टू विच फैमिली डीएनए डीएनए family i said it's beta. a dna virus agreed beta 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 family fine beta, beta is a class beta class of the herpes viridae family herpes viridae very good then what about varicella zoster varicella zoster belongs to gamma herpes viridae class is gamma very gamma good class. gamma class to herpes viridae varicella zoster then what about epstein barr virus सर हेरपेस वेरी डे अल्फा अल्फा वेरी डे अल्फा वेरी गुड देन ओके वी कीप इन माइंड वन मोर पॉइंट ऑल हेरपेस वायरसेस आर एसटीडीज दैट मींस दे आर सेक्सुअली ट्रांसमिटेड डिजीजेस एंड आल्सो मोस्ट ऑफ द हेरपेस वायरसेस कैन इंड्यूस कैंसर्स इफ यू गेट इंफेक्टेड बाय एनी हेरपेस वायरस देयर इज अ लाइकलीहुड देयर इज अ हाई चांस ऑफ गेटिंग viral mediated cancers to us so herpes viruses can cause cancers and also herpes viruses can uh, transmitted via sexual routes sexually transmitted diseases that is why um oncogenes oncogenes means these are the cancer causing causing agents are called oncogens okay uh, one of the important viral oncogens are our uh, herpes viruses herpes viruses can induce uh, uh, cancers fine so this is all about uh, viral classification and uh, these are their families okay mm. fine next uh, students um i need to emphasize a small notation uh, a small topic also let me take one uh, white uh, white top um, shoot mm. can you see this white display on your screens On your mobile. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Uh, let me let me tell you a short uh, topic that is also important for you. Uh, that is, so I'm I will I'm splitting this page into two two areas. Okay. So let me split the page into two parts. So here we have a cell. Here we have a cell with nucleus, and here I have a group of cells. Here I have a group of cells a group of cells like this a group of cells now listen now i have a virus let me take virus in another uh, uh, color uh, now a virus infected here uh, let me tell um, one best example what i can take mm, measles let me take as a measles or i will take um, fine i will take measles okay measles virus so here measles and here measles virus now this measles started replicating in the cell is measles a dna virus or rna virus students is measles rna virus rna virus measles is rna virus then what type of inclusion bodies you can see in a cell what are inclusion bodies intracytoplasmic intracytoplasmic very good intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies can be observed in measles viral infection so inclusion bodies are always present inside the cell am i true am i correct inclusion bodies always present inside the cell right yes, yes sir very good now now i'm coming i'm shifting this uh, view into the tissues now so here we saw a single cell now let us see what happens to the entire tissue when the measles virus started destroying the cells like this when measles virus is uh, replicating inside the cells because of this viral replication the tissue morphology the whole cell morphology will be changed the whole cells will start clumping they will clump the cells okay so all cells will start clumping into close masses so because of replication of measles virus the cell started clumping clumping of cells has been observed here so this is not a single cell but entire tissue entire tissue has been clumped 
what is tissue tissue means it's a group of cells will make a tissue now the morphology of tissue has been changed to a clumped morphology such cell the cell or tissue changes okay the morphology of cell has been changed in the second scenario in the second scenario the cell morphology has been changed such cellular morphological changes are called as cytopathic effects they are called as cytopathic effects cyto pathic effects p a t h i c p h i c cytopathic effects i'm telling again this is very important cytopathic effects e f f e c t s so the major difference between inclusion body and the cytopathic effect is inclusion body are the uh, viral leftover uh, debris which can be visualized inside the cell those things are called as inclusion bodies whereas the cell morphology will be changed due to replication of virus due to infection by a virus the cell morphology will be changed such morphological change of the cell is called a cytopathic effect changing of cell morphology is called cytopathic effect and the presence of some uh, debris inside the cell are called as inclusion bodies now the viruses are also classified into two types depending upon the cytopathic effect viruses are divided into two types cytopathogenic viruses and non cytopathogenic viruses that means not all viruses will show cytopathic changes only few viruses will uh, change the cell morphology but not all the viruses that will change the cell morphology those viruses are called cytopathic viruses cytopathogenic viruses and the viruses that don't change the cell morphology such viruses are called as non cytopathogenic viruses non cytopathogenic viruses now why i am telling this because we we got an interesting case i will i will tell the case listen to me so here i am going to uh, i have a cells now uh, i got a interest candidate this candidate name is rubella rubella virus this rubella virus has a problem now we need to detect this rubella virus whether whether patient uh, caused infection with rubella virus or not this rubella virus is a non cytopathogenic virus it is a non cytopathogenic virus that means if rubella attacking these cells cells won't change their morphology if rubella attacking these cells these cells won't change their morphology these cells looks fine the morphology of cells look perfectly fine they are intact they are unchanged then how can i able to detect how can i able to know whether these cells are infected by rubella virus or not there are few challenges another challenge is rubella virus won't show any inclusion bodies also rubella virus won't show any inclusion bodies rubella virus won't show any cytopathic effects also then how to identify this viral infection okay we have always the golden apparatus which is pcr by pcr we can able to detect the uh, virus but is there any other method to identify rubella virus any simple method do you have you understood my problem students rubella virus won't show cytopathic yes, effect sir. rubella virus won't show inclusion bodies then how we can identify this viral infection how we can identify presence of this virus in the patient tissue or patient sample yeah <clears throat> i will tell the answer we know the a logic what is our logic a single cell can only infect by a single virus right now what i will do is i will take a known virus such as measles i will take a known virus and i will purposefully add measles to this cell culture i will try to add measles to this cell culture 
can the measles able to replicate in the inside these cells students can the measles no, can sir. replicate no right no, what sir. is the reason because it is preoccupied by another virus yeah. very good that means even after addition of a non cytopathic virus a non virus such as measles i know if i add measles i i should see inclusion bodies and i must see uh, cellular clumping <laughs> even after addition of a virus it, this virus is called challenge virus even after addition of a challenge virus still i am not getting any cytopathic effects or uh, this uh, inclusion bodies means that definitely indicates the cells has been preoccupied by other virus the preoccupied virus can be a non cytopathic non inclusion body virus in this case here it is rubella virus and this test is called as interference challenge test this test is called as interference challenge test that means we are trying to interfere this virus with a challenge virus so we are we are interfering with this viral replication with a challenge virus with a known cytopathogenic virus so with the help of this interference challenge test we can able to detect uh, rubella virus viruses or non cytopathogenic viruses can able able to detect it with the help of interference challenge test interference challenge test so yeah so by now i have given you an additional topic called cytopathic effects so cytopathic effects are four types majorly we have seen cytom formation cellular necrosis cellular clumping rounding of cells cellular enlargement so there are uh, various types of cytopathic effects and there are various associated viruses that will cause uh, the changes in the cell morphology so that will also we will discuss in the future classes okay yeah mm, yeah now students so this is all the basics that you want to know okay by combining all these basics now we can able to study individual viruses in detail if you are good at basics your individual viruses will be damn simple so now i will tell uh, how to uh, systematically study virology how to study any virus systematically okay now this table whatever table i'm showing now is very 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 important keep in mind so no matter whatever the virus is we will satisfy these 10 points we will try to satisfy these 9 or 10 points so first we will discuss about its introduction introduction to any virus then we will discuss its classification that means say for example let us take hiv okay for example take hiv so first introduction to hiv what you will write hiv is a commonly sexually transmitted disease uh, which will cause immunodeficiency which is, uh, that is caused by a virus called hiv uh, the late stage of hiv results in a condition called aids so first you will write the introduction then you will write the classification hiv belongs to the retroviridae family to the genus uh, lentivirus to the uh, genus spermaviridae to hiv so you will write the classification of hiv then you will write the morphology of hiv what is the morphology of hiv then each and every virus students have its own susceptible factors and its own resistant factors what is susceptibility and what is resistance susceptibility means to these agents virus will be died and to resistance means to these agents virus cannot be killed so we will along with its morphology we will write its susceptibility and the resistant factors then we will write the mechanism of viral replication okay mechanism of viral replication for all viruses i was standardizing the six points students attachment um, tell me the replication of virus what are the stages in replication of virus attachment penetration attachment penetration uncoating uncoating biosynthesis biosynthesis release sm maturation and release very good then we will so this has been standardized by me and then viral culture so usually we need to grow this virus for growing this viruses we need to use either living animals or cells or tissues so that is called cu viral culture and then after viral culture after growing the virus in the animal or in the cell line we need to detect the virus 
in order to detect the virus, we will go with two traditional approaches. A, one is either by detecting its cytopathic effects or by detecting its inclusion bodies. So inclusion bodies or uh, what type of inclusion bodies the virus corresponding virus shown. Say for example, in case of rabies, you will see negri bodies. Negri bodies are the inclusion bodies in rabies, where a cytopathic effect will be cellular clumping. So cellular clumping and uh, negri bodies can be cellular clumping as a cytopathic effect and negri bodies are the inclusion bodies of rabies. Then you will write the pathogenesis and clinical symptoms of this uh, uh, virus. Pathogenesis means how the virus is a mode of infection in the patient, how the virus infected in the body like uh, via nasal root, orofacal root, any root, okay, uh, respiratory root, then how the virus spreaded into nearby lymph nodes. So that is called viral pathogenesis. There is a short topic. I will discuss viral pathogenesis. Then cl clinical symptoms. What clinical symptoms you can observe in the patient? Like <coughs> runny nose, headache, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Uh, viral mediated clinical symptoms. Okay. Then uh, sample collection. Collection of sample. Then lab diagnosis. In the lab diagnosis, we will read the same points. How you will cultivate the virus in the lab. How, what cytopathic efforts you will detect, what inclusion bodies you will detect, what heme absorption test. There are a few tests I will discuss later, okay? And what PCR you can perform. Is it RT-PCR, normal PCR? <coughs> then you, we will go with the treatment and immunoprophylaxis. So if you satisfy these 10 points for individual virus, that is virology. In order to satisfy, satisfy these 10 points, first you need to know the basics. That is why I was discussing in detail about basics to you. So there are a few more things that I need to add that includes <coughs> pathogenesis and uh, uh, this one, pathogenesis and detection of viral tests, tests to detect the virus. So heme absorption, interference, transformation and immunofluorescence I will discuss. Okay. Um, this we can discuss when we are uh, moving further students. So is everything clear so far? Everything is interlinked in this uh, virology actually. If you don't know any one topic, you cannot understand the other topics actually. Is it clear, students? So everything is in Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, sir. All right. Uh, hmm. So coming to the actual notes, today I will try my level best to complete a uh, viral morphology. So today let us discuss viral morphology in detail. So I'm just removing all these things. So classification is very important. You must work on it. Okay. So coming to the morphology of virus students, this viral morphology I will divide into three parts. Morphology of virus I'm going to divide into three parts. Keep in mind. First we will discuss its structural morphology. Then we will discuss its chemical characteristics, and we will also discuss about its susceptibility. Okay. So in the morphology. I will discuss these three topics. I will discuss about the virus size, virus structure, and viral symmetry. Keep in mind, and viral shape. Viral size, structure, and symmetry, and shape in the morphology. Then in the chemical characteristics, I will discuss about whether the virus is RNA virus or DNA virus, whether the virus has proteins. If it has proteins, what type of proteins virus has, and whether it has lipids. Lipids means usually annular. Annulled viruses will have lipids, whereas non annulled viruses won't have their lipids. Okay. Then susceptibility. That means uh, what, uh, how much temperature that the virus can withstand, how much pH the virus can withstand, what lipid solvents the virus can be susceptible and resistant. And uh, one second. And uh, it's radiation. Okay. Disinfectants and radiation. So these things I will discuss in morphology. So first I will discuss morphology, then chemical properties and susceptibility. So first let me start with morphology. Okay, I need an empty board here to discuss. Uh, let me take one empty board. Divide board. Viral morphology, pay utmost attention. Very, very, very important. Pay utmost attention, everyone. Take highlighter. Hmm. OK, so is everyone paying attention students? Are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. OK, yes, sir. Oh, so 
uh, I, I'm drawing viral morphology. Check here. Now, first, the virus will have a RNA or DNA as a genome. So, first, let me draw uh, a typical DNA virus so you can understand easily. So, this virus has a genome, right? Now, this genome, this genome is protected inside a protein structure in a protein shell. The genome has been protected inside a protein shell called as capsid. This protein shell is called as capsid. So I'm drawing capsid like this. So this is called capsid. Okay. C-A-P-S-I-D. Capsid. This is called capsid. And inside the capsid you have the nucleus genome. It has a nucleus or we can also say genome. Okay, genome. Genome. Now, now listen, together the genome and capsid or the nucleus and capsid, together it is called as nucleocapsid. These both structures together called as nucleocapsid. Nucleus and the capsid together called as nucleocapsid. Now, on the surface of this capsid, it will have small protein subunits. It will have some receptors. To be precise, this capsid has some receptors, some protein receptors. These receptors, the receptors that present to the capsid of the nucleocapsid, these receptors are called as capsomers. They are called as capsomers. Capsomers. These are called as capsomers. These are called as capsomers. Now, after capsomers, let's go straight. Are you are you seeing this picture, students? Can you see this whiteboard, everyone? Yes, oh, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this yes, nuclear capsid has protein subunits called capsomers. Sometimes these capsomers, in some test books, they are also calling them as a ligands, L-I-G-I and E-S. Or uh, to be precise, students, why is the attachment of virus happens because of this capsid capsomer solely? This capsomer will have an additional uh, structure called ligand. With the help of this ligand, this virus will attach to the cell surface. Okay, so this is the capsomers, and the and the uh, capsomers role is to attach the virus to the cell. Now, the the number of capsomers will vary from virus to virus. From virus to virus, the number of capsomers are different. Say, for example, I'm not quite sure, students. Um, Polio will have 60 capsomers. Polio virus will have 60 capsomers. It has been standardized. All polio viruses will have 60 capsomers. So, or uh, the viruses that belongs to Ordomyxo viridae, they will have 63 capsomers. So, the number of capsomers are family dependent. And the role of capsomers is to attach the virus to the cell surface. Okay, so this is the capsomers. Then, after the capsomers, mm, I need to, uh, there is an outer envelope. So I'm going to draw an outer envelope, see here. So outside this capsomers, you have an envelope. This is called envelope, E-N-V-E-L-O-P, envelope. This is called viral envelope, viral envelope. Uh, in some test books, rather than saying envelope, they're also saying outer membrane of virus but uh, the precise word will be envelope of the virus. Rather than saying outer membrane, you should tell envelope of the virus. Now, this envelope is made up of lipids actually. This envelope is made up of lipids and this envelope also have certain small protein receptors. Envelope also has some small protein-like receptors. The protein receptors that contains to the envelope these protein receptors are called as peplomers. These protein receptors are called peplomers. P-E-P-L-O-M-E-R-S. These protein receptors are called as peplomers. 
papillomers. The protein receptors to uh, nuclear capsid are called capsomers, whereas protein receptors present to annular as papillomers. I hope by this you may understood. We have two types of viruses, right? Enveloped viruses and non-enveloped viruses. Enveloped viruses will attach to the cell surface via papillomers, whereas non-enveloped viruses will attach to the cell surface via capsomers. Non-enveloped viruses will attach by capsomers. Enveloped viruses will attach by peplomers. Is it clear, students? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So far, the, the morphology looks very simple and easy. I will tell again, then I will add a few more important points to it. So, so far, first we discussed the genome. A virus has a genome. It can be a, it can be a DNA or RNA. It is also called as nucleus. Now, this nucleus is enclosed by a protein structure called a capsid. This capsid and nucleus together called as nuclear capsid. On the surface of capsid, we have small protein subunits called capsomers. These capsomers act as a functional unit for the virus to attach to the cell surface. Some viruses also will have outer membrane, which is called envelope. This, these envelope also have a sub protein subunits called peplomers. Envelope, the protein subunits of envelope are called peplomers. Protein subunits of uh, capsid are called capsomers. Together, capsomers. genomes. Very good. Now, very, very important students. Whenever I'm saying the shape, shape of the virus, it is all about the overall shape. Okay. Some viruses are brick shaped. Some viruses are rod shaped. Some viruses are spherical in shape. So we have three types of shapes, spherical, round. So the overall, I'm writing shape here. So viral shapes are of three types. Keep in mind, I'm telling again, viral shapes are of three types. Um, we have spherical shape, we have rod shaped, and we have the brick shaped, something which resembles like a rectangle. OK, so we have three shapes, spherical shapes, rod shape dot, brick shape, or we have some other thing like complex shape. Oh, we can't understand what is its shape properly, complex shape. So these are the three types of shapes. Then I'm going to introduce a very important word called symmetry. S-Y-M-M-E, symmetry, T-R-Y. What is this symmetry? What is the hell this symmetry? What is this symmetry? Viral symmetry is all about the shape of the nucleocapsid. It is not about the shape of virus. It is not about the overall viral shape. Symmetry is all about the the shape of the nucleocapsid, this one. This nucleocapsid will come in three shape, three symmetries. Nucleocapsid will come in three symmetries. Remember, one is helical symmetry. That means instead of having this polygon like structure, you will hexagon. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hexagon structure, you will have helical structure. That is called helical symmetry. Then we have icosahedral, icosahedral structure. So this hexagon structure is called icosahedral symmetry. This is called icosahedron symmetry. And you have another symmetry called complex symmetry. Complex symmetry. I'm telling again, symmetry is always about nuclear capsid. A nuclear capsid will come in three symmetries helical symmetry, icosahedral symmetry, and complex symmetry. Icosahedral symmetry and complex symmetry. Is it clear, students, so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So yes, the sir. Very good. Nuclear capsid has the shape of the nuclear capsid is called a symmetry. Symmetry. This symmetry is in three types: helical symmetry, icosahedral, and complex symmetry. Complex. Yeah. 
now i will discuss about the shape of the icosahedral symmetry icosahedral symmetry is very important now i'm going to the next slide uh, slide and i'm writing icosahedral symmetry in this icosahedral symmetry you have 20 facets it has facets f a c e t s it has facets of 20 i will tell what is this facets later okay so it has 20 facets and it has 12 corners corners are 12 c o r n e r s so the corners are actually 12 what is this what is this facets and what is this corners i will tell you one second now everyone practice when i'm drawing the structure students i will show you the structure of icosahedron the structure of a icosahedron so icosahedron first you need to draw two lines like this then you like this okay then in the bottom like this so first draw a hexagon after hexagon now very important draw one line like this then like this then again like this then connect to this ah uh, this is the structure of uh, icosahedron this is the structure of icosahedron icosahedron will have 20 facets let us count the facets 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 facets on anterior part and 10 facets on back side posterior part it will have 10 other facets so total facets are 20 then it will have 12 corners so corner 1 2 3 4 5 6 corners on anterior part and 6 corners on posterior part so this is the structure of a icosahedron icosahedron will have 20 faces and it will have 12 corners this is the structure of icosahedron so so try to practice this uh, this diagram okay icosahedron diagram so i will draw icosahedron again one second on a new page here i'm going to draw a icosahedron so how to draw icosahedron means first you will draw a hexagon Can you see the whiteboard, students? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So first, to draw a hexagon like this. Then top. It's a little tough to draw in computer like this. Then down. Then draw a base line in the bottom like this. Then draw a triangle and along at a triangle touching top. then draw another triangle inside like this then connect these parts and this is the structure of a icosahedron so this is perfect structure actually 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 10 10 and 10 back side and 6 6 uh, corners 12 corners so this is the structure of icosahedron so the, if you study all this together this is the morphology of uh, viral students so a quick uh, thing in the viral morphology first we have the genome and then it has a capsid called uh, nuclear capsid then nuclear capsid has capsomers and some viruses have envelope envelope will have a proteins called papillomers then uh, together nuclear capsid shape of the nuclear capsid is called a symmetry symmetry we have three symmetries helical icosahedron and complex and overall shape of the virus when i say shape it is overall shape of the virus so this is all everything now let us go to individual things so first size of the virus so viruses are uh, smallest living organisms and uh, hmm. see this point students just tell me this one extracellular infectious particle is called virion do you remember what is this if the virus is outside the cell then it is called as virion. virus virus virion virion yeah. very good. extracellular yes. infectious particle is called virion 
and virus ranges from 12, 20 nanometers to 300 nanometers or 200 to 300 nanometers. OK, uh, the most direct method of measuring virus is by electron microscope. OK, so that's it. Then coming to the structure and symmetry of virus. So in the test book, it is like this students very complex, but I break down it. So here you can see two types of symmetries also. Here this is helical symmetry and this is. Oh, sorry, this is helical symmetry and this is equosahedral symmetry. So. Uh, yeah. So virion consists of nuclear uh, nucleic acid core. Nuclear acid core can be either uh, uh, DNA or RNA, and it is surrounded by a coat called capsid. Capsid along with nuclear acid is called as caps uh, nuclear capsid. Capsid is composed of subunits called capsomers. It is useful to form impermeable shell around the DNA, and it is introduced into the DNA. It is for uh, attachment simply. Some viruses contain envelope. Surrounding the capsid is called as envelope viruses, and this uh, envelope has a uh, projectile spikes called peplomers. OK, then uh, coming to the symmetry. Symmetry, we have three types of symmetry. Ecosahedral symmetry, helical symmetry and complex symmetry. Say for example, this is a ecosahedron and this is helical symmetry. OK, now. I will show you the pictures of viral families again. One second. Where is it? Oh, this one. I suppose I kept the family picture. Here, I kept it. Uh, here students. Uh, this one. Uh, in this students, tell me about this one. What type of virus is it? What is the symmetry of this virus? Tell me. What is the symmetry? Helical. Of this? Helical. Helical. What is the and is it enveloped or non enveloped? This one. Is it enveloped or non enveloped? This paramyx of virus. Enveloped only. Very good. It, since it has outer spikes, you can see enveloped only this one. Now, what about this virus? What is the uh, symmetry uh, of this icosa, virus? Say icosa, icosa icosa shape by symmetry. Yes. Icosa is enveloped non enveloped. Non enveloped. And uh, um, yes. very good. Then what about this virus? Is it ecosahedral or helical? Symmetry. Ecosa. Tell me the symmetry. Ecosa, ecosa hedral, ecosa ecosa hedral. Hedral. Enveloped or non-enveloped? Enveloped. 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 Then what about this virus? What is the shape of this virus? Cluster. The shape looks like a <laughs> rod. Shape. It's not rod, it's a brick shape. Okay? And uh, it's complex yes, symmetry. Right. Symmetry is complex and shape also complex actually. Usually there is a brick shape, which is pox virus. Then coming to this virus, what is the shape of this virus, students? It's a so rod helical, shape. Helical. Helical. Okay. So okay. Symmetry. What is the symmetry of this virus? Envelope. Symmetry. Symmetry is helical. Rod shape. OK, and enveloped virus. Yes, sir. By the way, uh, even if you observe the, here in this rod also, one end will be flat and other end will be blunt. And this is the accurate morphology of rabies virus, actually. So rhabdovirus will have rabies viruses. OK, then uh, uh, what is this virus, students? Is it RNA or DNA virus? Tell me now. Uh, OK, uh, symmetry. What is the symmetry of this virus? This one. What symmetry is it? Helical symmetry. Very good. Uh, and uh, helical what about symmetry. this is helical symmetry. Very good. Actually, helical only, not complex. Okay. Complex looks like this. We 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 can't see anything in complex. Then is it enveloped or non-enveloped? Non-enveloped. So non-enveloped. No, this is enveloped. Okay. Enveloped, sir. Enveloped. The green part is enveloped. This. Yes, it's enveloped. And uh, uh, does it has any peplomers? It has peplomers, yes, right? Sir. Yes, and sir. this is coronavirus actually. So now you know some basic properties of coronavirus. Coronaviral pro symmetry is helical. Coronaviral shape is spherical. Overall shape is pakka round. So it is a spherical shape and symmetry is a helical symmetry and uh, it is an enveloped virus. So corona, corona is an enveloped spherical uh, helical symmetry virus and its genome is RNA virus. 
in the rna also to be precise we need to tell whether it is a single stranded rna or double stranded rna and is it a positive sense rna or double uh, negative sense rna okay if you know all these data then you know precisely about that virus and that we will study in individual viruses so now you got some idea right how we will study viruses it's a very systematic yes, way of studying you can't randomly write few points here you need to write everything about the individual virus and also this virology really helps you in your projects when in the sixth semester or in your higher studies if you want to do projects just to try to gather the data of these points if you collect these data that's it your project will be finished actually what receptor you are what receptor the virus has what type of attachment is it is it an r is it rna or dna is it a pulsing uh, positive strand or negative strand is it a, what type of symmetry it has what type of uh, morphology it has what type what type of shape it has if you collect data of all these 10 points that's it you will become virologists you will become experts in virology so i hope morphology of virus is clear for everyone right so please yes, sir. The, yes, sir. yeah yes, sir. so whatever i say the same same story is in a boring way in the textbook in a paragraph manner so just go through this one it's easy so this is enough for today students tomorrow we can move on to the next topics chemical property is very straight forward that we will, we can discuss later so let me take your attendance so any doubts in today's lecture students no right no sir no sir No sir. No sir. No sir. Good. Um, one second. All right. I I will download your attendance. You can leave students. Thank you very much. You can Thank leave. You, I will download. Thank you, sir. 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 Uh, I'm Hello. sorry, I can't help you. Uh, see you. See you, students.